Last day we used a peanut butter sandwich to talk about operational definitions in science, and we decided that an operational definition was a recipe or a list of, of steps, a very specific list of steps that would allow us to create the thing we were defining or to measure the thing that we were uh, defining. Now, we're going to use that idea of an operational definition to build some of our foundational ideas in kinematics. For example, you are here, but where is here? It's three in the morning, it's dark, you're a little bit afraid, it's kind of a sketchy neighborhood. You find a phone booth. Work with me here. In the olden days we used to have phone booths because we didn't have cell phones. You're in a phone booth, you're calling your friend, and you say, come get me. Your friend says, where are you? What's the first thing you want to tell your friend? Brave soul, raise your hand. Okay, look for a street sign or some sort of a, a, a reference point that your friend would recognize. You, you, know, you know that market over there on 3rd Street? Well, I'm just down the road from that. Okay, so we need to, we need to agree on some reference point. And then, once you have a reference point that you can agree on, you tell them how to get to you from that reference point. You know, go three blocks uh, east, two blocks north. Um, we can also describe that uh, with a vector. And we typically label that vector R, with a little vector sign on top indicating it's a vector quantity. Now the name that we give that is position. Now, Arnold Arendt, one of the founders of the field of physics education research, feels very strongly that, first of all, you should have an idea that you just desperately want to talk to everyone about. And then you name it. That's what science is about. My daughter, bless her heart, she's just a, a wonderful uh, mother. She's got four children. She's a biologist. She's just a very accomplished individual. In high school, she got straight A's. And when she'd bring home her, her interim report card from science, it was just a hoot. I mean, it was all A's, but when you'd read it, in this one class, it was Scientific Vocabulary 1A, Scientific Spelling 1A, Scientific Vocabulary 2A, Scientific Spelling 2A. This teacher thought that science was memorizing a bunch of fancy-sounding words and knowing how to spell it. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you don't, if you don't know at least three different ways to spell buoyancy, you're not a scientist. I mean, <laughs> you, don't, you don't become a scientist because you can spell, okay? So you got to have this idea, and you want to talk about it, and then you give it a name. Now, here's the operational definition. You define an origin, draw a vector from the origin to the object. That's it. That's all there is. It's not hard. Now, what if I go someplace else? Well, to define that going someplace else, we can start with our operational definition of position. And we can define an origin. From that origin, we can define a, an initial position and a final position. What we're looking to uh, talk about is this vector here. The vector that goes from the starting position to the ending position as the crow flies. <laughs> Now, your gut's telling you what you want to call that. This is the vector that I have to add to my initial position in the morning to get my final position at night. This is the change that gets added during the day. And so I want to label that as a delta R, where it's what I add to the initial to get the final. Now we give that a name, we call it the displacement. And I want to point out two important things about that displacement. First of all, it's very, very different than the distance traveled. If this is the wander that you did in the woods, the displacement vector is as the crow flies. 
If I were to start right here and go all the way around the Earth as fast as I could and come back right here, my displacement would be zero. My distance traveled would be a, a huge number. Okay, so very different concepts. The second idea is that if I had chosen my origin over here, some of these vectors would change, some not. What about these position vectors? Would they be different? Yes. yes. They would, because now they'd be starting at some origin over here. But the, the displacement vector would be exactly the same regardless of what I choose for my origin. That's important, because these position vectors here are geography. We teach that in a different building. Okay, they're totally dependent on my coordinate system. This vector here, the displacement vector, is what we build all of kinematics on. And then on top of that we put dynamics, we call that mechanics, and that's the foundation for physics. Okay, it's all built on that vector right there. And it's independent of the coordinate system. Okay, we're going to be using that a lot.